That new guy, Julius, is so, so annoying, so racist, so elitist, and so was Xion, right? And then we corrected him, and now he's having his redemption arc, and a lot of people are saying, let him cook. How? He came into the fucking dwarf bar getting all mad, calling them stinky, and then just froze the place, and then threatened to, like, kill everybody, and then we tried to confront. It was pretty cool. But we didn't get that level of like payback just yet. We're saving this for the tournament arc. We're getting into a tournament arc. What's going on? Um, people of all uh, different uh, factions and stuff were gathering here but at the, and trying to get credits. But at the end of the day, it's really just to procure these Magia vendors that has a chance to fight against this... It, ah, fuck, I forgot the name again. What was that thing that's supposed to be like beyond like the barrier? I forget the exact terminology, but basically we're trying to, you know, have forces that can fight amongst them, right? Let's begin today's reaction. Oh, we're just getting right into it? <laughs> Support the sky, as in, you know, keep the fucking barrier up and never serve the foundation for evil. All right, we're getting right into it. The Celestial Host, I think. Whoa! Yo, the firework animation. I'm like, what's going on? These different, you know, uh, quadrants are divided up into their elements. It's elemental fireworks. Yo, let's go. Grand Magic Festival, baby! Fire faction scout. Basically, instead of broomsticks, we're riding on dragons. And I guess this isn't really Quidditch, but we're going through the hoops, right? Is that Colette? No, no, Liana, Liana. Liana was the super OP one of the lightning faction, right? Yeah, she seems to be the strongest. And then... There is Julius, and then there's the other, like, uh, Ikim and Elf guy, I think. Earth Princess. There is something weird about how Earth doesn't even have a faction. I think Earth is obviously closely associated with... And th it's not that it doesn't have a faction, but there doesn't exist, like, a, like an Earth Sovereign, like a Magia vendor, right? It was left out last episode, but we know that there's, like, a connection with them and the dwarves and probably some sort of prejudice with people that can't use magic and blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm not sure, but Earth Princess. Important to know. Why is she there? And that's the scout we saw before. God, look how much better Iris is without her glasses. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Whoa. Never seen the top of the tower. This is the top on huh? the roof. And I'm gonna assume that uh, Elfie is, is in the tower just still watching. Actually, I'm not sure if this is the tower. Like, I think it is the tower, right? It's the shit in right in the middle of our city. Right? Am I crazy? I'm not, I'm not crazy, right? What is that thing? The scout's going. Where's she going? Hmm? The fucking voice shift. There's no way she's the Earth Princess, right? There's, there's no way she's the Earth Princess, right? Okay. Let's go, Shion. Cringe. <laughs> Who's the lady in need? The Colette actually... No. This is his POV. He's delusional. Did she actually? I don't remember this. No, I think he's being set up. I think Colette just matched Will and Sion together to work together. And I still think that Colette and Sion is going to be a ship. Just like the Hermione and Malfoy example I gave before, I think that there could be something there, but... Will? 
<laughs> is your teammate. Our team. We're all working together. Alright. <laughs> Interesting team. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to. Why are you getting so mad? Just leave. Just, you can just walk away. <gasps> Yulius! Is he here right now? No, that was actually Okay, I, I thought it was just imagery for a second. It was- Oh my god. Alright, well, you know, we had the whole conflict in the bar last episode, and obviously we're really looking forward to the 1v1 if it ever happens. If it's a team match, that's fine, but I just still want to see Will vs. Julius 1v1. Yeah, you're not even priority, bro. The pecking order is different here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's not looking at me anymore. He looks at the blue haired guy. Oh my god! <laughs> Actually getting fucking cucked. Fine, I'll work with you so that you will acknowledge me, Will, and look at me in the eyes, just like how you look at Julius. This shit's getting so gay, I love it. Bro's name is Mike Mayus, bro. The commentator. Let's see if he's just as good as Blader DJ and Beyblade. Or like the Captain Tsubasa narrator. Okay, he's goaded already. We have the number one most hated professor, Edward! Round of applause! Boo! The students are imagining this? Yo, what the fuck is going on with the students here? They want that dark viper whipping their ass? Hmm, interesting. I don't know what an interesting mix. Oh, shut the fuck up. Just give me the rule set. You trying to explain the fucking game in these riddles and fucking poetry? Come on. Okay. That was just magic casting. Ooh. I have no clue what just happened. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. So what they were doing is incantations to set different regions around the stadium for the battle. I thought that they were trying to explain the rules of the game through some series of riddles. Get the crown. Traps. Ooh, more professors. Yo, who is she? Eriza Nosferat. Hold up. Isn't Nosferat too like some sort of like vampire Dracula lore shit? I mean, if you look at her eyes, the there's a slight, like, black shading to kind of refer to some sort of under... Oh, sorry, uh, undead shit? I don't know. Then we have Bruno Marcus. Okay, Eddie's on Bruno. Nice. Basically, even his fucking thing has a face here. But basically, teams of three, Battle Royale, Apex Legends, get into the fucking middle, get the crown, win. That was pretty good from Edward there. It's that elf guy. The top three guy. Yo, yo, what? Yo, wait, wait. I can't say this too loudly while I have a fucking mic announcing, but in the unofficial secret gambling halls, the bets are in. <laughs> yeah.
Yo, he manipulated- I don't know if you're still allowed to bet the money in, but like, yo, I can't believe you just saying this shit so publicly. I guess the professors don't really care too much. Yeah, it's underground dealing bets, but they're all like willing to turn a blind eye. <laughs> what if Edward put all his money on Will? That would be a fucking plot twist. It looks like he doesn't even know of such a dealings based on his reaction there, but imagine he put everything onto Will, be like, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> and then here's another team completely popular for the opposite reasons. The least popular team, Squad 6. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's fine. Only because of these kind of treatments can we actually pop off and prove to them they're wrong. The underdog story can only happen because of these requirements. The moments that we pop off too much and they acknowledge your strength is when the power fantasy honestly kind of dwindles because people already recognize how strong you are. Rusty. Yeah. Nah, this is a personal grudge against Julius. Oh. I love this, bro. Last episode, I hated how less enthusiastic he was about the tournament. But now, with an actual reason, not for himself, but for the dwarves, bro, we are gonna win. Locked in oh. will is what? rare. Weeder. You should warn Julius. <laughs> Promise goggles on. So I guess the Miss Perfect, Ileana or something, she's not part. Liana. Liana is not participating, right? They showed her in the previous flying match, but right now we have the two of the top three, but I think Liana is not participating. I wonder if he could have just froze these. I feel like this is a regular Magic High School. Onisama, if he had a freeze ability, he would have just all just like stopped this shit from spawning. <laughs> Golems. I ain't gonna lie, these golem designs are really cute. I don't know, it's, it's a little stubby legs. The golem, these look like chibi golems. You know what I mean? <laughs> The legs are too short, it's too cute. No sword! Mm. Let's go, Kuretu! Oh! I didn't realize that he could just do that because he needs some kind of weapon, so we can just create a gauntlet with Colette's magic. Oh my god. Yes. You deserve that shit, bro. <laughs> That's all you gave her talking all that shit. You got the fucking cup of drink in your face too. What do you think about that, huh? No. No. I wonder what Edward thinks here. Edward seems pretty chill. He's, he does look like a, he has a face of like, not as much of a shock because he's seen what Will can do, but like, I wonder what's going on through Edward's mind. Maybe he's thinking I should have bet on the kid. Mm -hmm. Genius. One punch. They started to call him book learner now, Will Selford, instead of being the lagger, the talentless. But all right, Shion also still realizing like, holy fuck, this kid is really, really cracked. No wonder I'm trying to get his affection instead of him looking at Julius only. Oh, lore, 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 lore. So this says race, Rizant, age 15, 164 centimeter, birthday, 8th of Lucia Moon, likes dwarven bean dishes. Oh, not racist. Would like to hide her past. Particularly up until five years ago. There's something up with her. Not only because she's close to Will, but they mentioned the Earth Princess today. 
but she's participating and i assume that i don't know colette is one of the few people that does it is part of the earth faction and they mentioned earth you know earth princess today but they would not wouldn't they recognize her it's not like she's living a double identity but she's hiding a past okay deepest dungeon floor reach seven equipments earth soul wand blood seal bracelet skills lower seek summoning golems first love will seraphort i feel so bad but Koret and Shion, i think will have something the only daughter of the fallen noble house of loar dreads having to exert subtle control over magical energy made friends with will after a certain incident when she was a first year okay fallen noble house i don't know what happened in the past but that sounds like really important lore This is Mike Maus. Maus, okay. 167 centimeters, 16. Likes festival events, doing play-by-plays. Dislikes stillness and silence. Professor Edward. <laughs> he doesn't like Professor Edward either. Role model. The mage with the explosive voice, Bullhorn J. Interesting. Deepest dungeon reach is fifth. Equipment, dark climber one. Skill, voice, amplification, magic. All right. If you're far away, you listen to the sound of my voice. If you're further away, dig the wax out of your ears and listen harder. I'll give you a play-by-play -play of everything at every festival, whether it's the Harvest Festival, School Festival, or of course, the Grand Magic Festival. I'll use my voice application magic to get you fired up. No one can quiet, uh, no one can quiet the beat. No one can quiet the beat of my soul. That sounds kind of weird. Even now, my heart yearns to cry out, woohoo. That's right. Some people call me the walking din, and my name is Mike my I, I enjoy how enthusiastic he is about commentating. Oh, Sion? Realizing how weak he is compared to Will? Yeah? I want Sion's redemption arc, dude. Does this count as lazy filler animation? Like, I know what they're trying to do. There's no dialogue. And Sion's not even fucking moving. I understand. This is, this is a very deep, impactful moment for Sion. Because I think the author's really trying to build him up to have a crazy redemption. Like Melt in Oshinoko, you know? They start off shit, then they get corrected, and now you want to actually root for them. Mm. Mm. Yet he's still this strong. Yep, he is so far away. That's the thing, bro. You're chasing after him. But he doesn't even know you exist. No, he does. But like, to him, he's thinking about something else. It's Elfie, and right now the tournament's about protecting the dwarves in the fucking bed. And Sion is just so behind, just chasing after Will's shadow. That bracelet, the Bloodborne bracelet, right? They're showing a lot of animation towards it. <laughs> yeah, fuck the gauntlets, we can just summon swords too, let's go. For Will. There's one left! Nice! Dude, it's the fucking one-man show. That pose is nasty. That pose is nasty! God damn, bro! It's like the T-pose, but on steroids! Yo, Sion, do something! All right, I don't know how much longer they're going to be delusional for, but I guess we can make sure that Kolek gets the credit here instead of Will. I mean, Kolek for sure is helping, but come on. Edward glazing, but he's not glazing. 
Because Edward is the guy that will just straight up tell you how it is. And this is not biased. In fact, that's, he's biased against Will. But he can at least still acknowledge that, like, yeah, this kid's different. Like, compared to everyone else, bro lives in the dungeon. The experience just sets him apart from everyone else in combat practical uses like this. <laughs> It's just crazy how different her personality is, bro. But like, I wonder if this is like, she says it's an act, but what if this is how she really feels? You know, like from the bottom of her heart, yes, this is an alias and she's supposed to cheer her senpai. But at the same time, what if that's also just an excuse and this is how she really is? <laughs> Flower traps. <laughs> Surprise they didn't use girls for the victims here. If it was SAO, they 100% would. <laughs> Is someone staring him? Wait, 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 wait. He's moving, but he's not moving his legs. I don't, I don't know. What is this? Is someone carrying him? What is this? Oh no, he's just walking. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? This, this animation, I thought someone was literally like carrying him or something. I don't know how long range the ice magic could be, but could he not just like freeze the entire stadium? I mean, Will could probably punch that shit, but like, he's still pretty confident about this. I still expect like a 1v1 duel near the crown between Will and Julius. Alright. walking really slowly. Literally cut the circle. Bro just cut the circle out and just made a point towards each other. That's pretty smart, yeah. What do you think, Edward? That's your own traps that just got diffused by Will. What are you gonna say about this? <laughs> it's so brutally honest, I love it. Fuck! Should've made it harder. <laughs> How are you moving him out of this peach bubble? <laughs> and we're literally moving the fucking bubble out of his face. Ah! <laughs> oh, that's so smart. Setting up an ambush, fuck the crown. Alright, just go for Yulis and prepare for him, alright. But I feel like he'll just freeze the entire forest. Baited, baited so hard there. He was just walking though. I mean, when he was walking, the trail of path he was walking on was like frozen as he kept walking. So did he like ice skate his way here? He probably just created like a ice path and he just like... That's a lot, bro. This is the time for Shion to put up some work. I think that as strong as ice is, fire should be pretty useful against ice as well. And there's a lot of this shit that Will can cut, but I anticipate that Shion will put on a show for us to anti Julius. Oh! Yeah, 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 yeah! Damn! The fuck of that animation! Dude, the ice vaporizing is sick, but like, she was getting so serious! Oh, there's that frame I was looking for. Look at that rage. You 
are making my boyfriend look at you only. No more, Julius. Let's go. See your redemption. <laughs> This is a big boy spell! <laughs> He's not even trying to help. Like, you could try to angle it a little bit above. Is it Julius above? You're just shooting it right at fucking Will. He doesn't care right now. <laughs> What's going on, Mike? Well, that was very counterproductive. Thanks, I guess. Like, my understanding of that moment is... Sion is very upset and frustrated, so he decided to use an all-out attack that was meant not only for Julius, but even if his teammate Will was there, he doesn't care kind of deal. It's not specific to uh, Will, I don't think. It's just that he was there, and Sion's like, fuck you too, I think. Don't get in my way kind of deal. Yeah. He said... Leave, Julius. You're in the way. It makes it sound like this is now a duel between Will and... Sion. Because of this comma. You know? Julius. Is he here to settle the grudge match? You want a revenge match? Not now, bro. I thought you'd take care of Julius for us, but... Alright, I guess we'll get to do a little infighting. Maybe we should let him cook, right? Like, I still feel like he's still gonna have a redemption arc. This seems stupid right now, but like, what if we're getting fooled? What if this is like, him making Julius think that like... We're fighting, but then it's like, Psych gotcha! I don't know. I don't think it's an act anymore. Come on, bruh. Yulis. He's just him! This is fucked. This is fucked. It's Colette versus Julius and now fucking Will versus Shio. This is messed up. <laughs> We're surrounded by a bunch of idiots. You know what? Fuck him up real quick then. Let's 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 kill both Xion and Julius in one run then. If you're gonna be like this, like fuck you. Th this scene is really cool though. It's a repeated scene again, but like the amount of trees that got burned down, it, it just shows you like the impact of that flame attack. Cliffhanger! And that's today's episode of Wistoria, and it was pretty exciting getting right into the tournament arc. And I love the narrator, Mike, and the polar opposite person, Edward, just both on the commentating seat. So what's going on? We're doing like a 3v3v3v3 battle royale, and the goal is to get to the center of the map and retrieve the crown. But right now, when everything was looking so good for you, for uh, Will, and Colette putting in so much work creating these... Uh, magical gauntlets and swords, right? Because he can't just bring his own sword into the battle. Julius was able to, sorry, Will was able to use his, like, uh, you know, his regular powers. But just when I thought that Shion would, like, step up and counter the ice abilities from Julius, we're just getting double fucked. Like, like, he immediately attacks at Will and Julius, right? Into indiscriminate. I don't think he's necessarily on Julius' side, no. I just think that he just hates Will to the point that he was fine with shooting that shit. And now we're separated by the ice. Cola just got fucked by Julius. And now we have Sion versus Will. Again? Like, or, like, it just feels a little counterproductive in what this character was developing into after episode one. But I feel like we could also be misleading. You know? Like, what if we just, should we let him cook for one more episode? Because I still feel like the redemption arc is going to happen. 
but he still hasn't gotten over the episode one grudge. So until that gets hand settled, who knows what's gonna happen, but that's it for me. If you're still here though, and if you enjoyed his reaction, please like the video, check out the other playlist for more content, and until next time, take care.